everybody. Welcome back to Environmental Science Analysis with Dr. Lisa. Today I'm going to show you how to do a stepwise regression in R. Uh, so the first thing, of course, we always do in R is we load up some important libraries, the kind of stuff we think we might need. You know, that's, that's standard. The next thing we usually do is load our data. So here I am. I'm going to load my data. So I've loaded it up as this thing called PFAS. This is for, for, for PFAS stands for perfluoroalkyl substances. These are perfluorinated compounds measured in the fish in the Great Lakes. This is the same data set that I used to do some mapping in a previous uh, video. Um, so it has latitude and longitude species. But for today, what we're doing, what's important is what's here in these columns, F1 through F5, and some of these other things. These are concentrations of different chemicals measured in the fish. Okay, here they're concentrations, and here I've also expressed them as a percent of total. Um, and I might want to predict all of these things as a function of some of the other stuff that was going on in the fish, like the total PCBs, uh, the ratio of uh, unmetabolized to metabolized PCBs, the sum of the brominated diphenyl ethers, another ratio involving them that has to do with metabolism, total mercury, uh, so these are the five descriptor variables that I'm going to use to see if any of these have any relationship to the concentrations of the P PFAS chemicals measured in the fish. Okay, so I'm going to do this stepwise regression, and I want to point out that I got a lot of this material from this uh, wonderful video on, uh, on uh, YouTube by Mike Krausen. I highly recommend it. Um, this is going to be, I hope, a shorter version. His... his, uh, his uh, Video is 22 minutes long, so I'm going to try to cram this in a little more quickly. So the package we're going to use for these linear models is called OLSRR. So let's load that up. So the first thing you have to do is create your model. And I'm, I'm not very uh, creative, so I'm just going to call it model. <laughs> so model, and I'm feeding into that a linear model, LM. I always do that, sorry. I always move stuff around when I mean to just highlight it. Linear model LM. Data is from this thing called PFAS. And then here's my Y. Right now it's F1, which is, again, here. It's in my PFAS data uh, file column called F1. Okay? Uh, and then I'm going to predict that. At, so this is like an equal sign. Remember, the tilde is like an equal sign. As a function of some other variables. Some of PCBs, PCB ratio, some of BDEs, BDE ratio, and mercury. And again, these are all column headings that come out of this uh, data file or data uh, frame called PFAS. So I already have created my model. Now I'm going to do a stepwise fit and I'm going to use this function OLS step forward AIC. Uh, this, the AIC here indicates that we're going to use the Akeki information criterion as our criterion for deciding which of these variables up here are important and which ones are not, which ones are statistically significant if you like to use that phrase. And I recognize that a lot of Bayesian people don't like to use that phrase. Okay, uh, so we're going to do a, an OLS step forward model using the AIC criterion. We're going to do that on our model that we have called model. Uh, and I say details equals true here so that it will print out all of the details. So I'm going to run that. Sorry, got to run the model first. Yeah, run the model. There we go. And then I can run that. Boom. And you can see it spits out a whole lot of uh, output here. So here are the candidate terms. Um, step, four, step one is to, to look at all of these candidate terms and determine which one has the lowest AIC, which turns out to be PCB ratio. So it adds PCB ratio. So then the first step is to check out F1 as a function of PCB ratio and then see if any of these other variables are also statistically significant or whatever phraseology you like to use. Uh, and the one that comes back with the lowest AIC here is mercury. So we're going to add mercury to our model and we're going to do a function where F1 is predicted as a function of PCB ratio and mercury. And then we look at these and we say, okay, I started out with an AIC of 1168.168. And then when I added another descriptor variable, my AIC actually went up. And remember, lower AIC is better. So this is telling you that adding an additional descriptor variable doesn't make any sense because it does not lower your AIC. So that's why it says no more variables to be added here. No more variables to be added. 
Uh, and then here's your final model output with useful statistics like R squared, uh, adjusted R squared, root mean square error, mean absolute error, all of these useful things. It's got an ANOVA. Uh, th th here's the actual estimates of the parameters. So these are your coefficients. Okay, so that might be very important for you to know. Uh, with their standard errors, t, significance, etc. <coughs> so all very useful stuff. Now if I feel like that maybe is a little bit too much, then what I could do instead of getting this huge output is I could just say, I could take, I could turn details equals true, I could turn that off. Uh, and then I could say, just print me the model and the coefficients. Boom. And so only the, the coefficients that have significant, quote unquote, significant coefficients are going to show up here. And that's just the PCB ratio and the mercury. And there are your coefficients. I can do very something very similar using a backward fit. And I'm going to use the function OLS step backward AIC. So I'm still using AIC as my criteria, but now I'm doing the backward fit. And again, you get a very similar output, except when I do the backward fit, now it's actually got four, um, four variables that are showing up as important. The sum of PCBs, the PCB ratio, the BDE ratio, and the mercury. So you get a different result depending on whether you go forward or backward, uh, which is kind of interesting. And I've, I've said, again, I've said details equals true here, so I get the full details. But if I want to compare the forward and the backward models in a more uh, concise way, right, I can just print out the, the um, coefficients. And so you can see that the coefficient for the PCB ratio is still about minus 1, but it is, it is different between the two models. The coefficient for mercury is about minus 0 0.02, or plus, excuse me, plus 0.02 plus 0.02, but, but somewhat different. And again, um, the backward fit model is showing me some additional parameters as being significant. So we can have a long discussion about which, which version you believe. That's for another time. Um, but notably, you can also do either a forward or a backward fit using P as your criterion. And so that is function OLS step backward P here. Okay, otherwise very similar. Notice I've turned details off here. I don't have the details equals true in that, in that line. So I can run that and just print out the coefficients. Um, and now using the P, only the PCB ratio is significant. Still has a coefficient of about minus one. Uh, but uh, using p-values, only the P PCB ratio is significant. So go figure. Okay, bonus material. Now I'm going to show you how to do this in a loop. Yay, looping. OK, so up here, when I wrote my model, I originally wrote it this way. And my Y was given as a column header from my PFAS data, right? my, my data frame. <coughs> and when I imported that data frame, of course, up here, I had said header, header equals true, right? So I had told the program that my headers you know, mean something. So I could use them down here in my function, F1. But now when I do this in terms of a loop, instead of making my, my Y value a header, I'm just going to call it <coughs> the data from the PFAS data frame in column I. And notice the double square brackets around the, the letter I. And that allows me to then tab through all the values of I uh, from 7 to 19 up here. And so here in my PFAS data, I have column 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's why I'm starting my loop at column 7, and I'm going all the way through to column 19 over here somewhere. Um, so I can step through all of those, <coughs> again, by using this, this command here. So if I start this loop, and so, so this is saying create the model, OK, then do a forward fit. I didn't, details is not true here, so all I'm doing is saying, okay, print out the name of the column I that we were just fitting, so I know which is which, and then just print the model and the coefficients. I don't need, I don't need anything more than that. Uh, and so I'm doing the, uh, the forward fit, and then here I'm doing the backward fit, and again, just printing out the model and the coefficients. So if I run this whole thing, and notice the squiggly brackets here, right, for I in 7 through 19, squiggly brackets, and then everything between these two squiggly brackets is going to be repeated over and over again for 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. Enter, and booyah, it's starting to run through all of my data, giving me all of my results 
in just a few seconds. It's a thing of beauty. Once you know how to do it, it just seems so easy. It's like taking candy from a baby. So this is an exploratory model. I don't know uh, which of these variables is significant or not. I don't have re a really a good feel for it. So I'm going on a fishing expedition, pun intended, um, to determine which of these five variables is important for all of these things. So here's the results for the percent four. I scroll up, here's the results for factor one, factor two, factor three, et cetera, with the forward first and then the backwards. And you can see sometimes the forward and the backward, backward give you exactly the same results. In fact, frequently they do, uh, but not always. Right, so here's for factor one, we saw some different stuff going on here. So that is how you do uh, a stepwise regression in R, uh, even using a fancy, fancy loop to loop through many columns of data.